Hi, Gene Burnett from GeneBurnett.com. Hey, I thought I'd show you a little bit of a practice that I do, and uh, it might encourage you to do something similar. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, um, I did a few where I was working with these um, four-pound uh, four exercise balls. They're, uh, sometimes they get a little squishy, and so they don't keep their round shape, so I kind of have to pound them in a little bit. Um, they weigh four pounds, which is not nothing. If you've seen some of my other videos, you might have seen me do um, some Bagua palm changes, which I adapted for um, using these balls, circling and doing, you know, various palm changes with, with, the, with the four pound balls. Um, I did that for a while and I enjoyed it and it was fun. Uh, but I found that it was a little tricky to do at home and I didn't quite have enough space to really do it and um, I don't know, it just it stopped feeling as good as it did when I first started. It just wasn't as interesting. So, um, And I also, to, to be able to do it outside, I got to carry eight pounds in my pack and I just didn't feel like doing that very often. So, so what I've done lately uh, is something I really like, which is just kind of an improvisational play with the balls. Um, you have to be careful if you do something like this. Four pounds doesn't seem like much, or maybe it does, but it's it's a decent amount of weight. So basically what I do is, um, I started with doing just this basic sort of Bagua teacups exercise. They call it the teacups because um, it's as if you had a teacup in your hand. And a, a, a Chinese teacup might be more like a bowl than a, like a British teacup. So uh, you have the, the the cup in your hand, and the idea is that you you want to bring it, bring your hand. You know, it's usually done empty-handed, like this. You want to circle your hand so that the tea you don't spill the tea. You need to keep the tea kind of the cup kind of levelish. Um, so I'll do that with um, with the four-pound balls like this. So that's kind of the first step, and I will often warm up by doing, say, 10 uh, circles or so with um, just doing the teacups like this. And I'm not trying to keep them absolutely level. There is a point, like right there, where that's a bit of stress for the shoulder. So I don't, I don't do them super large, I just do them comfortably like this. Keeping the space between my knees so I'm not twisting my knees around kind of like I'm sitting on a motorcycle while I do this. Um, and I'm kind of pushing up with my legs a little bit here and sinking into my hips a little bit there, just a little. So that's the first thing. Um, then the next step is to alternate. So you're doing one at a time and sort of one starts and the other continues after it. It's very much, it's the same exact thing as this. It's just that I just delay one of them. So it's like that. And I can get a little bit more cross action. I can work my core a little bit more and get a little bit more um, fluid with it. Then um, the third option is doing it the reverse direction, which is a little bit tricky on the shoulders. You've got to be careful if you do this one. It's a little tricky right there. But not bad, you just, you know, again, caution if you do this kind of thing. Um, like that. I don't really do one-handed every, I mean, every other one that way. It just never really feels right, and I might get around to doing it someday. But So those three movements are the basic uh, idea with the balls. You do the, the teacups, and then I do the one at a time, and then I do the other other direction. And really the most uh, fun that I have with these things is I will start to improvise. So when I'm doing this improvisationally, I pay very, very close attention to where the ball is in space, where the momentum is headed, and where I can um, guide the ball and move it using the energy from my own body propelling as well as gravity taking it down so that I, I want to move the balls with a minimal strain 
there is effort involved, but I want to minimize the strain involved. So what, what I'm really getting used to is working um, angles and um, arranging my body in relation to weight, in relation to pressure. Now that can eventually be the pressure of another person, or that can be just the pressure of gravity, but I'm getting used to working with gravity and momentum and pressure such that I, such that I minimize the strain uh, to my body, to my muscles, and to my joints. So here's what it looks like. Um, let's say I start off just doing the teacups. I'm listening to where the momentum is taking me. So I might do this kind of motion. And I'm not, I'm not hurling these balls around with my, um, with my arms. I'm not doing this. I'm not making it happen with my arms. That's actually kind of dangerous. I'm always moving my body to move the balls. So when I turn my body, it brings this around. See, like this, my, uh, my left hand here. So it, it's going that direction anyway. So I just follow it. If, it, if they're going up and they're going down, I'm going to go with it. I want to try to minimize the strain and oppose the balls as little as possible. So I just start moving and I just let the balls guide me around to where they want to go. Every once in a while I have an idea, like I'll slow down and I'll say, oh, why don't I try diving down like this and see what that feels like if I move my feet, doing this kind of motion. But usually it's just spontaneous. I just listen to how the... Um, where the momentum wants to go. And sometimes I'll do something clunky and it'll, it won't work and I'll just relax and wait for another sort of... Uh, it's weird. It's like they're almost like trains that you have to catch. Like that's coming down and it naturally wants to go down and flip up like that. And that can happen with a step. And I can work at different angles. And all the while keeping the space between my knees so that I don't... I mean, I can close the space. What I mean by that is I don't twist into the space. I keep it... I keep my thighs pretty much parallel and pretty much uh, pointing the same direction as the middle of my foot. So I've got different directions and different ways that I can go. Sometimes I'll just do the circle and I'll just lift one leg at a time, get a little bit of a quad stretch. I'm just lifting one heel at a time behind me. Or while I'm doing this, I'll just do kicks like that. So I'm practicing separating the core idea of doing kicks with this circle here still ha also connected to the core. So there's, <laughs> there's a little uh, synergy there. But just finding different ways to move and uh, manipulate or be manipulated by the balls is uh, it's a great workout. You can hear I'm already a little bit out of breath. You can imagine doing this for five or ten straight minutes or longer. Keeping, you know, you can do all kinds of different movements. You can listen to see, like, what feels good. And some angles like that, there, it doesn't feel great today. Sometimes it does. It feels a little tweaky in my shoulder. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit to something a little bit more uh, comfortable. So it's something I do uh, pretty regularly. I have these in my office, and if I'm watching a video, um, uh, say a video on YouTube, I'll just stand up and do this while I'm watching the video. Of course, if I'm watching a video, I can't be spinning around and being a little bit more, you know, improvisational like that. I'll just narrow the field a little bit and watch the video while I'm doing, you know, something simple like that. And so. Yeah, it's just been, uh, it's been really nice uh, training for both flow and looseness and strength holding, holding those balls. And um, it's been uh, great for flow and, and dealing with uh, pressure and trying to relieve, remove strain. Um, I'm going to, uh, oh, I also have, I have uh, a, a pair of heavier balls. Don't go away. Now, uh, these puppies are 8-pound balls, so 8 pounds, 
I don't scamper around and improvise and flow around nearly as much with these. These, these I have to be careful with. Holding 16 pounds in your hands while you're really going crazy can be a little risky because you could turn around and all of a sudden the ball could be in an inconvenient place and um, you could or I could hurt my shoulders but with the uh, eight pounders I pretty much do the basic circles that I just showed you. I do the teacups, I do the alternating teacups, trying to even more to find ways that I can minimize the strain and then I'll do the um, the reverse one, reverse teacups like this, like that. The eight pounders are significantly harder to do and I don't uh, do them nearly as long or as, as many repetitions as I do the uh, four pounders. Um, the four pounders really felt heavy when I started. Like four pounds felt like a lot of weight. Now it feels like I'm almost holding nothing but the, the, the eight pounders I really feel and I, I don't know if I'll ever get to the point where, of being really uh, kind of improvisational and a little bit uh, daring or wild with the eight pounders because that's might just be too much too much risk for my tendons and stuff. So the the main point though is to is to work with physical objects the way that uh, Tai Chi or or Bagua or uh, whatever your art is the principles that your art. Um, you know your your art uh, is based on um, uh, my art is based on efficiency, effectiveness, and avoiding injury, uh, unforced balance. Like these are key um, key uh, principles, and sort of shepherding gravity uh, through my body so that it flows to the ground without torquing or injuring any of my joints, and shepherding my own physical effort from my legs through my body so that I don't. Um, injure myself there. So force in, force out efficiently and smoothly. So taking a medicine ball or a cannonball, I did a, a video a while back where I worked with a 20 pound cannonball, just how, how I work with that object, um, it just helps me uh, take weight and pressure into my body and out of my body. It helps me do that. So with the balls, you know, here's me, my energy going out into the ball and then here's gravity coming down. M me gravity. So I'm taking force into my body and out of my body, in and out, and using my, you know, Tai Chi principles, Bagua principles to spread that work out so that the appropriate parts do the appropriate job at the appropriate time. So I end up being uh, more effective and more efficient and um, and avoiding injury. That's a, that's a key, key important thing. So thanks for watching. I hope that's a little inspiring and you might want to try to do something similar or something. Some people I know work with heavy bars. Sometimes they take a bar that's really heavy and they'll, they'll do a bagua position. The bar's falling like from a point on them and they'll move around the bar and use that weight or they'll use uh, different weights to um, add weight to different flowing movement exercises. The point is not just to lift weight. It's to move weight around and through whole complex uh, groups of muscles and stuff. So I'm sure some of you maybe are already doing that. I'd love to see a video if you're doing something interesting with, uh, with weighted objects. I'd love to see it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, I recently um, stopped having ads on all my YouTube videos um, because uh, YouTube has changed their policy and monetization of videos is going to be pretty much for channels that get a lot of views and have a lot of subscribers. I've got enough subscribers, but I, I don't get the kind of viewer uh, hours that you need to have ads. And I always had mixed feelings about the ads anyway. Um, I don't like them. And so um, now I don't have them. So the mixed feelings are gone. I feel great. I can just put the videos out there. You don't have to watch ads or, or block them. You can just watch the videos for free and hopefully this stuff is helpful. Um, the reason I started doing this channel is just to share ideas and music that I thought might be helpful to people. Um, however, if you do would like to support my efforts and, and help me do this, it's, uh, it's always nice to get contributions. I probably made $100 a year, something like that, on my videos and uh, from, from YouTube, but I'll tell you, it helped. So um, if you feel like making a donation, there's a little PayPal link in the description below. Uh, no donation is too small or too large. Uh, and I appreciate it, and it's totally voluntary. So thanks for watching. Uh, you can also visit GeneBurnett.com if you want to check out more about me and what I do. Thank you.